Praise the Lord, everybody. We'd like to welcome y'all here tonight, and we would like to thank Saber again for coming and going to start yes. a, ser a series yeah. teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Tonight is going to be the introduction, so I uh, hope y'all are ready mm -hmm. to learn something about the Word of God, learn something about the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're just going to have a quick word of prayer, and then my wife is going to come sing a couple of songs immediately after that. Uh, the next voice you'll be hearing will welcome Sabra again, and she will be in charge of her service until she turns it back over to me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you yes. for, for watching over us and taking care of us, God. We thank you, Lord, for helping us all to get here. We pray for uh, Jessica and her daughter, Libby, Father God. They, they got some type of virus. We speak healing to their body yes, right now in yes. the name of Jesus. They were coming, Jesus, but they right. got sick. And we pray for them and speak healing. And we loose that sickness all from around them right now in the name yes, of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, as my wife comes and then Sabra comes, Lord, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, the fire would fall upon them and would consume them, yes. Lord. And we would not hear from Sabra, but we would hear from the throne yes. of God. Yes. Every Lord, ear would be open, every heart receptive, and every eye be seeing what you would have us to see, Father God. That we would leave here rejoicing and saying how good it has been to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I may not know uh, one of these songs, but one of my brothers, and I'm going to do it first. It was uh, for our church, Restoration Church. It's our theme song.
right. I'm going back. Yeah. That's why I sing all my hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Thank God my yesterday is gone. And all my sins are forgiven. Oh, cause I Thank you, Lord. Let's welcome Saber again. God is good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I am so excited. I'm so excited to begin to teach a series tonight on the subject of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are so vital to the church today. Yes. And they're so misunderstood. Now, if you look at your handout, I've listed for you three different types or three different groups of gifts that are mentioned in our <coughs> New Testament. We have first the ministry gifts called the pulpit ministry gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12, these are ministry gifts, and man ha just gives titles to these gifts in order to help us to understand them easier. They're called pulpit ministry gifts. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Wherefore he saith, when he, speaking of Jesus, ascended up on high, he led captiv captivity captive and did what? Yea, gifts unto men. For the sake of time, we're not going to read the whole passages. Look down in verse 11. And he gave some, not all, but some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What was the purpose of Jesus when he ascended, when he went back to the Father in heaven? What was his purpose for giving these gifts, these ministry gifts unto men. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, That's right. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or building up or encouraging or the maturing of the body of Christ. So these gifts are pulpit ministries. People call to these gifts, these offices are up before the congregation. They're called pulpit ministries. I am called to be a teacher. Pastor is called as a prophet, as well as the pastor of Restoration Church. Not everyone is called to this group of gifts, the pulpit ministry gifts. Not everyone is called to be up before people teaching, perfecting the saints, which is instructing, maturing, 
and for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Not everyone is called to these offices. That's, That's right. why there are different groups uh -huh. of gifts, different types of gifts. Now, look at the middle of, of your page. The next group of gifts given to us in the New Testament is what man calls motivational gifts. Romans chapter 12. In verses 4 through 8, Paul writing to the church at Rome says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth or shows mercy with cheerfulness. Everyone, everyone receives one of these gifts in Romans chapter 12 at your new birth. At salvation, every person receives, they are given one of these gifts. It's your gift. Mm -hmm. It's a part of your character. Come on, it's sister. It's interwoven into your nature. That's and right. And you can operate or move or work in your gift all the time. Because it is for the edifying, for the help of the entire church, all of our members. It's just like we have many members in our body. We've got That's eyes, right. we've got ears, hands, feet, and they don't serve the same purpose, do they? Neither are the gifts that God places in his body. They're they're different. They're unique. Why? Because Come on. different people have different needs. I don't move in the office of prophet. Therefore, don't come to me mm -hmm. expecting me to give you an end-time prophetic word of something that's going to happen mm -hmm. next month, next year. I'm not called to that. That's not my office. But that's why we have different offices. So notice now, you've got prophets mentioned in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. You've got prophecy mentioned in the motivational gifts, Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And then... Look at the third group of gifts, and that is the series that we are going to be covering is the gifts of the Spirit. These are listed for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, <clears throat> verses 8 through 11. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers or different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills, as the Holy Spirit wills. That's now, right. this group of gifts... You do not have one of these gifts. These are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you only operate in these gifts as the Holy Spirit anoints you to yes. operate. In That's right, gifts. sister. Amen. Then is when you can be used of the Holy Spirit to in these gifts. For instance, you can't wake up in the morning and decide, I'm going to operate in the gift of working of miracles, and I'm going to go out and work a miracle. Like old Mo that stretched forth his hand in the Red Sea divided. Can you do that anytime you decide to? No. That, now if the Holy Spirit came upon you, anointed you to operate in the gift of working of miracles, yes. then you can yes. use that gift. These gifts, this group of gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are the gifts of the Spirit. They are the Holy Spirit's right. gifts. Yes. And He anoints us. He allows us. He comes upon us. He anoints us at times to operate, to move in 
these gifts. Man, I wish I did have the gift of healing. I'd go empty every hospital in this area. I'd go to every nursing home in this area, and I'd empty them. I spent five weeks in a nursing home in a wheelchair, and I know what it's like in nursing homes. Don't you think if I had the gift of healing, if it was my gift, don't you think I'd drive everywhere? I'd empty out every nursing home. I'd lay hands on them. I'd get them healed every hospital. But you see, I can only minister in the gift of healing as the Holy yes. Spirit anoints yes. me yes. To, to operate in this gift. Now, I pointed out a minute ago, now look at it. Notice the word prophets in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Notice the gift of prophecy in the motivational gifts, Romans chapter 12 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And notice prophecy in the gifts of the Spirit, 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. People get so confused about the gifts, they just put all of the gifts in a bag, shake them up, and dump them out, and just say, pick one. That's your <laughs> gift. No. Each three groups of gifts are different. The prophet, in Ephesians 4, that is someone called to the office of a prophet, like Isaiah, Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Daniel. Prophets, mm -hmm. those with the motivational gift of prophecy, people get it so confused. Come they on, think sister. if they move in the prophetic, That's they call right. it. If they yeah. are, have the gift, the motivational gift of prophecy, then they think that mistakenly they are a prophet. Most of them are sincere, but sincerely wrong. Do you know That's right. that we mm -hmm. have to be taught on all the different subjects of the word? We may be sincere, just sincerely wrong. And so all three groups of gifts are completely different. They have different functions in the body of Christ. And with, I've already asked Pastor, after I finish the series on the gifts of the Spirit, at a later time to move to the motivational gifts. Cover that grouping of gifts. There's seven of them. Move to the ministry gifts, the pulpit ministry gifts in Ephesians 4. That way you'll have a complete teaching on all of the gifts. Now, let's concentrate on our study. Tonight's going to be the introduction on the gifts of the Spirit. So get your hand out that says gifts of the Spirit introduction. Now, the scripture tells us that we are to desire to operate in these gifts, in these nine gifts of the Spirit. Now, jot these scriptures down. I can't put all the scriptures that I refer to in your handout. It'd be 10 or 12 pages long. So jot these scriptures down. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, and he says to desire spiritual mm -hmm. gifts. Ah, now if they were your gift that was given to you, would you have to desire no. it? No, it'd be yours. But Paul says to desire spiritual gifts. And then in this verse, it goes on to say to desire that you may prophesy. So Paul says, hey, this group of gifts, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you are to desire Mm -hmm. to be used of God. You are to desire to operate in these gifts. Jot this scripture down. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But covet or desire, covet earnestly right. the best gifts. We are to desire these gifts. Mm -hmm. Covet them. To just long to be used in these gifts. Long for the Holy Spirit to anoint us. Wouldn't you love to be able to lay hands on somebody that's crippled in a wheelchair yes. and then get up and walk? Come on, sis. Ooh, I would. In Kenneth yes. Hagin's meetings that I used to attend, I would watch them line up people on the stage in wheelchairs, 25, 30 at a time. And I've watched Hagen many times just point at various ones and say, rise, sister, right. be healed. Rise and walk. And he'd point to another one and they would get up, begin to walk, and then push their wheelchairs yes. off the stage. We are to desire these gifts. Amen. It would be wonderful mm -hmm. if you used and operated 
in these nine gifts where you can. Yes. We, the, they're for right. the body of Christ. Oh. The Holy Spirit has given these gifts as He wills. You can operate and you can be used by the Holy Spirit in all nine of these gifts. I want it, don't you? Yes. I yes. want everything that God has for Amen. me. I want it. I'm going to desire them. I do desire these spiritual gifts. Covet earnestly the best gifts. Which is the best gift? The one that's needed. Oh, hallelujah, time. sister. Hallelujah. If I have a need of healing, I don't need you to come up and give a, operate in the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and give a message in tongues to the church. <laughs> that's not the gift that's needed right then. That's right. Is it? No. So we are to operate and be used by the Holy Spirit in these gifts as He wills, Amen. as He chooses. Yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and chapters 14, these are two of the most misunderstood and misused chapters in the entire New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we will get to that when we cover the gifts of diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. That is covered in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And isn't there a lot of confusion yes. in the body of Christ mm -hmm. over the subject of tongues? Mm -hmm. Well, there's just as much confusion in the body of Christ concerning the gifts of the Spirit here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I know many of you are in or came from denominational churches that don't teach on the gifts of the Spirit. So... A lot of church members, people who have gone to church for years, don't know anything about the gifts of the Spirit. Come on, sister, teach it. Because mm -hmm. they haven't been taught. That's right. And when, I, when the pastor first asked me to do a series on Saturday nights, and it, it, the Holy Spirit just brought the subject of the gifts of the Spirit to, mm -hmm. my, to my heart to teach. I've really been in a dilemma as to whether to teach on them or not because they're, they're so, there's such confusion in the body of Christ. But I, I knew how can you learn about these gifts unless you're taught about them. So we're going to teach on these nine gifts of the Spirit. Until we are taught the word on various subjects, we're just like the Ethiopian eunuch. Remember him? Jot down Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. He was riding in, in his chariot, the Ethiopian eunuch, and he was reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. That's right. And Philip the evangelist, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, Go join yourself to that chariot. And Philip came to this man and he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Or do you understand what you are reading from the scroll of Isaiah? The, the eunuch answered him, How can I except some man should guide me? Or how can I understand this unless someone teaches me? Right. So Philip climbed up in that chariot with this eunuch and he taught him the scriptures where he was reading in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. So we're like this eunuch. We, we need teaching That's right. on yes. various subjects Amen. from the Word of God so that we can understand them. And we are just going to briefly cover a series on the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not going to do an in-depth study on the gifts to cover them thoroughly, I would have to spend eight to ten teachings on each gift, and then I wouldn't exhaust the teaching on it. And it, it would take months and months and years even to cover just this one series. So I'm just going to cover briefly this not the nine gifts of the Spirit and mainly introduce you to these gifts. And hopefully it will whet your appetite so that it will spark a hunger and a desire within you to know more about these gifts and to know more about operating in the things pertaining to the realm of the Spirit of God. Now, I don't want to overwhelm you with so much information that you can't grasp it 
So I'm, this is going to be just an introduction, just a brief study. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. You can either turn in your Bible or look at your handout. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, <coughs> verse 1. Paul writing to the church at Corinth, and he says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Paul, writing under the inspiration, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, writes this letter to the church at Corinth, and he tells them, Brethren and sistren, mm -hmm. I would not have you ignorant. Ignorant about what? Concerning mm -hmm. spiritual yes. gifts. Now, if God didn't want the church at Corinth to be ignorant or unlearned or untaught about the gifts of the Spirit, then he doesn't want the church today to be ignorant mm -hmm. and unlearned about these gifts. Because God placed these gifts, he placed these scriptures, he placed every subject in his holy written word for us to read, for us to study, for us to learn, and to live by, and to put into practice in our life. Unfortunately, in the church today, there is a gross <laughs> ignorance in there. A gross ignorance does exist concerning this chapter on spiritual gifts. Like I said, in many churches, they aren't taught. So the people don't know anything about them. And some are taught that the gifts of the Spirit, like tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, have been done away with. And That's they right. no longer exist. And therefore, they're not for us today. In my denomina denominational church that I grew up in, the pastor taught against the gifts. He said they were just for the, the book of Acts, mm -hmm. for the church to be established. And then after the original apostles died, all these gifts ceased when the last apostle died. He was sincere, just sincerely wrong. So I believe that. Why? Because I was taught that from the minister in the pulpit. But then I began to read the word for myself, search the word for myself, mm -hmm. learn what the word says on subjects like the gifts. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit were not done away with. They did not cease after the book of Acts, after the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and the following chapters when the church was being established. Paul is writing this letter to the church at Corinth approximately 28 years after the day of Pentecost. Oh, man. So had the gifts ceased then? After the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. after the first church was established in Jerusalem, had the gifts ceased then? No. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't be writing right. about them to the church at Corinth. And so Paul is instructing the church at Corinth concerning the spiritual gifts. So therefore, they hadn't been done away with then, and they haven't been done away with now. Hallelujah. And Usually the ministers that, that teach and preach that the gifts have done, been done away with, they'll pick one verse out of context and, and use this verse. And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Charity or love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail or cease. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So they pick this portion of this verse out and they say, see, it says that tongues is going to cease. Come it on, says man, that prophecies it. is going to cease. Well, look, has knowledge ceased? No. Absolutely not. You Knowledge is increasing to the point that you cannot even keep up right. with the knowledge and the technology today. Knowledge hadn't ceased. Well, if knowledge hasn't ceased, neither have anything else that Paul is writing about. Neither have prophecies. Neither have tongues. Knowledge is still here. Knowledge is still for us today. And so are the other gifts. Now, look at verse 9. You can't take one scripture out of context and base a doctrine on it. Like I said, they say, see, prophecy, tongue ceased. But 
Don't stop reading Come on. verse 8. Read the following verses. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Now who is the perfect one that Paul is writing about? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Now has Jesus returned to set up his kingdom on this earth and, and, and begin the millennial age? Has Jesus returned? Return? Has the perfect one come? No. So these gifts, they're not going to be done away with. They're not going to cease until the perfect one, until come Jesus returns. Come on, returns. sister, that's Hallelujah. right. Hallelujah. Look at verse 12 again. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Till Jesus comes, we just see in part. We just know in part. We don't know everything. We don't have all knowledge. But then when we see him face to face, when the Lord Jesus returns, then we won't need knowledge. We won't need tongues. We won't need interpretation. We won't need the gifts of miracles. So the gifts of the Spirit have been given to the church, and the church is to operate in these gifts until the perfect one comes, until the Lord That's Jesus right. That's returns. Right. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's read verse 1 again. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren... I would not have you ignorant. Mm -hmm. Let's learn about these nine spiritual gifts so we won't be ignorant about them. Amen. Verse 2. You know that you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost or by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same mm -hmm. Spirit. Now same. Paul begins by giving correction to the believers at Corinth. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to instruct them concerning this, the gifts of the Spirit. Now, why did the church at Corinth, why did these believers need correction? Because before they were born again, they were Gentiles who knew absolutely nothing about God or the Holy Spirit. They worshipped, as Paul called them, dumb idols. That's right, that's right. And some of these new Christians were coming into the church at Corinth and they were so confused about what was the Holy Spirit of God and what was, was someone manifesting or, or operating out of this, the wrong spirit, the spirit of the enemy, that they used to worship in their idol temples, worshiping their false gods. Some were getting up in the church services and even saying that Jesus was accursed. That's right. So Paul corrects them by teaching them and saying, Look, no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost or by the Holy Spirit. And you wonder how could anyone who is a Christian do these things? You must remember that the church at Corinth was filled with Gentiles who knew absolutely nothing about God. That's and right. And lived their entire lives worshiping false idols. Remember one chapter earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 11, Paul is rebuking these same Christians mm -hmm. yep. because when they came together in their church services, he said, you can't even partake of the Lord's Supper. Why? Because some were eating all the food Others yep. were going Come hungry. Come on, man. Some were getting drunk mm -hmm. in the church yep. services. Yep. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul writes concerning a, a man who was living with his father's wife. There was a man in the church of Corinth that was shacking up with his <laughs> stepmother. That's right. Paul says, hey. You get the sin out of the church. When you come together, you deal with 
with this sin, you get it out of the church. Why? Because he said a little leaven, leaven at the whole That's right. If you don't mm -hmm. deal with sin immediately in your midst, it will be like leaven. It will grow. It will multiply. Amen. So Paul is writing to a bunch of carnal baby Christians. <laughs> and so after Paul corrects them, in verses 2 through 3, he immediately begins to teach them and give them instructions concerning the spiritual gifts. Let's read verse 4 again. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. That word diversities in the Greek is number 1243, if you look it up in a Strong's Concordance, and it means variety or differences. So there's a variety of gifts. We just read three different entire groups of gifts. There are differences. There are a variety of gifts, different kinds of gifts. But they all come from the same spirit. Yes. Now notice the word spirit in these verses is a capital S. Mm -hmm. This means that it's referring to the Holy Spirit of God, not the spirit of man, not our own spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. You're a three-part being. So if you've been referring to your own human spirit, it would be a little s. But Paul uses capital S. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, he sometimes calls the Holy Spirit. He's referring to the precious Holy Spirit, not the spirit of man. And so verse 5, he goes on to say, And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Differences of administration. Now, this word differences is the same exact word as diversities in the prior verse. It's number 1243. The King James translators just chose to use diversities in verse 4, and they chose to use the word differences in verse 5. But it's the same word in the Greek. The, the New Testament, remember, was, mentioned, was first written in the Greek language. So look at that word. That word administrations means ministries or offices mm -hmm. like deacon, prophet, teacher. There are different kinds of ministries. So there are different types, different kinds of, of gifts, and different kinds of ministries in the church. But we have the same Lord, the same Lord Jesus Christ. He is the head of all of the different types of gifts, all of the different types of ministries in the body of Christ. Now look at verse 6, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. That word operations in the Greek means working or to shew forth, to show forth. So there are different ways that the Holy Spirit works or shows himself or manifests himself through others. But it's only by one God who is working through the Holy Spirit in all of these diversities of operations, all of these different gifts, all of these different manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, look at verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, is given to every man to profit with all. This word manifestation means to appear. To show plainly, clearly, publicly, openly. So when the Holy Spirit manifests himself or operates or shows himself openly in church services, it profits, it benefits, mm -hmm. it helps everyone in the church service. Everyone can, be, can benefit or be helped by the manifestation of the Holy Spirit through others in these different gifts mm -hmm. in the church services. Now, look at verses 8 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 11. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another mm -hmm. the word of knowledge, by the same Holy Spirit. 
Verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds or different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Notice verse 11 says, the same Holy Spirit divides or distributes these manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit to mm -hmm. every man, every woman every man in woman. the body of yes. Christ. Look at this look at this phrase, every man. In the Greek, if you look this phrase up, every man, it's number one five three eight. And it means every or both or each man and each woman. So when, it, when it's referring to you men, mm -hmm. you brethren, it's talking about ye sister in too. It's mm -hmm. talking about the, the men and the women. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit divides these gifts to each man, each woman, severally or separately as he, the Holy Spirit, wills or chooses. The gifts come into manifestation or operation through a person in a church service as he, as the Holy Spirit wills, not as the person wills. As I mentioned before, you can't decide to, get to operate in these gifts anytime you want to. It would be wonderful if you could. But it's only as the Holy Spirit anoints you to operate in these gifts. Just like I said, I can't wake up in the morning and decide to go, that I'm going to go out and work a miracle it, and operate in the gifts of working of miracles and, and just perform a miracle anytime I choose. Boy, it'd be great if we could, couldn't it? Couldn't mm -hmm. we? No, but it's only as the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon a person that they can operate in these gifts, in the working of miracles, in the gift of faith. It would be wonderful if we could use them any time yes. we chose, but yes. they're as He wills, right. as That's the right. Holy Spirit Amen. chooses to use us. Amen. But we can be used, because what did Paul say? Desire, Desire. to be used. Yes. Covet yes. earnestly the best gifts. The one that's needed at the moment. Yes. Somebody comes up and says, hey, I'm, I've got this awful pain in my, in my chest. It's not the time to say, what do I do? What do I do? No. You need the gift of healing yeah. right then. That's to lay right. hands on them to stop that heart attack. Yes. Yes. Amen. These gifts operate Come on. as the Holy Spirit chooses that's to right. anoint us, but we have to desire them. We have to want them. The Holy Spirit is not going to force right. anything on us, but I desire to be used yes. in these gifts. Yes. How about you? Yes. So, now, the gifts of the Spirit, like I said, you got to keep these three groups separate because they're completely separate. These gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, these nine gifts are not given to you at salvation, at your new birth, like the motivational gifts are, like the gifts in Romans 12. Your motivational gift, like I said, it's a part of your makeup. It's interwoven in your character and your personality. You, It's just a part of you. These Gifts that we're studying here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are completely different gifts. They're completely separate grouping of gifts than the gifts in Romans 12 called the motivational gift. You are not given one of these gifts in, in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12. You're not given one of these gifts to be your own gift, your own personal gift. But you can be used of the yes. Holy Spirit Amen. in all. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. That's right. The anointing of the Holy Spirit can come upon you at when it's needed yes. to operate in the gift of working of miracles. And the anointing then lifts off of you, and you can't decide on your own, I'm going to work another miracle. Wouldn't it be great? But no, it's as He will. That's right. As the Holy Spirit chooses. I really prayed and prayed that the Holy Spirit would give me the words to say to help you understand these teachings on the gifts of the Spirit that, that we're going to be covering. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to do it a 
deep, in-depth study, and, and I'm not going to go into great detail in each of the gifts. I'm going to just keep it as simple and as easy to understand as I possibly can, especially those of you who've never heard of the gifts or if you've been in denominational churches and been taught that these gifts aren't for us today because you, you can be sincere mm -hmm. but sincerely wrong right. in your beliefs. <laughs> That's so right. I don't want to be sincerely wrong, do you? Amen. Amen. So you may have never heard of the gifts or you may have heard of them and been told they're not for us today or you have, may have been taught other things that are incorrect about these gifts. So we're going to cover them one by one Amen. in the coming weeks and cover from the scripture. We're going to look at scriptural men and women who were used by, by God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit came upon them to operate in these gifts. And you'll, you'll be able to recognize them as you read the word. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I, as you read the word from now on, when we cover these gifts, you're going to say, hey, that's the gift of faith in operation. Hey, that's yep. the gift of working of miracles. Hey, yeah. that's the gift of prophecy. Hey, that's the gift of the word of knowledge. The word of God will come alive to you as you read it. Yes, and amen. Once you learn about these gifts because you can see them operating. That's right. Oh, and it's fun to read the Gospels and see Jesus operating in the different gifts Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't stand myself because I know what I'm going to be sharing with you. <laughs> and the ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verses 8 through 10, they list nine different spiritual gifts or gifts of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Now, get your third page. These gifts, these nine gifts can be divided into three groups are three categories with each group having three gifts in it. Nine gifts. These nine gifts are divided into three groups and each of the three groups have three of these gifts in them. Now, let's talk about them. Three of the gifts say something. Three of the gifts do something. And three of the gifts reveal something. They're the three gifts that say something are called utterance gifts. Mm -hmm. Why? That's just a word that, that man has named them to help us understand these three gifts. They're called utterance gifts because they're manifested or shown forth through utterance, through someone mm -hmm. speaking and operating in these gifts. The three gifts that do something are known as power gifts. Yes, that's right. Because you see a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit when these three gifts are in operation. And then three of the gifts reveal something. And they are called revelation gifts because the Holy Spirit reveals something when these gifts are in operation. So I made a chart so that you could see them and, and see how they're grouped together and make it easier for you to understand. Three of the gifts that say something, the utterance gifts, also called inspirational gifts, are the gift of prophecy, mm -hmm. diverse kinds or different kinds of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of, of tongues. Why? Are these grouped together? Because they're the speaking gifts, the mm -hmm. utterance gifts. They come forth through someone speaking in the church services. The three gifts that do something, called the power gifts, are the gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles, and the gifts of healings. Now, the three gifts that reveal something, they're called the revelation gifts. They're, they are the word of wisdom, That's right. word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Now, wasn't that simple? Mm -hmm. Look how much you already know mm -hmm. about these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's right. They're divided into three groups with three gifts in each group. Three gifts say something. Three gifts do something. 
three gifts reveal something. Now that wasn't hard, was it? Mm -mm. Now you're all experts on the gifts of the Spirit, so I'm going to sit down and let you teach a while. How about it? Oh, you don't think so? All right. Well, let's go on to the next step. Let's define each of these nine gifts and find out what each one of these nine gifts mean. And again, I want to use just the simplest terms and make them just as easy to understand that I possibly can. I don't want to give you a bunch of Greek words and definitions associated with it because you still won't know any more after I read you a Greek definition and tell you a Greek word. You still won't know what that, that gift means after hearing just a list of Greek words. For example, I put one in your handout. So that, that you could see it. Now look at look at your handout on the introduction. Look down at the bottom. An example of the Greek word for the word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's number 1108 in the Strong's Concordance. The Greek word for the our English word knowledge is gnosis. Gnosis. And it means knowing the act, right. i.e., or by implication, it means knowledge, it means science, and this word gnosis comes from a root word in the Greek, number 1097 is the, the root word, and that root word is gnosko, gnosko, and this root word that from which we get our English word knowledge means a prolonged form of a primary verb to know absolutely in a great variety of applications and by many implications as follows with others not thus clearly expressed. Allow, be aware of, to feel, to have knowledge or to know, to perceive, to be resolved, can speak, be sure, understand. Now that's the Greek definition of the word for gift of knowledge. Now how many of you clearly understand what we just read in, from our handouts as the Greek definition of the gift of the word of knowledge? Clear as mud, wasn't it? <laughs> Sometimes when I read definitions of words in the New Testament in Greek or the Old Testament in Hebrew, sometimes when I read these like this, the gifts. When I read the, the definitions in the Greek, I don't know, I still don't understand what it's saying. I, did you? Did you just understand that? No. no. So what I have to do is I have to go to my Greek reference works written by men and women who do read the Greek language fluently and who have knowledge of it, who have written books on the Greek language, putting it in words simple enough that this Alabama Southern girl can understand. <laughs> so, I, I don't want to give you a bunch of Greek words and a bunch of Greek definitions. I want to use simple terms that you can Amen. easily understand. I have to, to go to other reference works. I need explanations of some of these words that I look up. I have to rely on people to teach me, Greek scholars who have, who have studied and who know the Greek language. So, I'm not going to go into a great lengthy detail on the Greek definitions of the word. That, that's not, it wouldn't benefit you. So now, what we're going to cover as the definitions, look at your hand now, the simple definitions of the nine gifts of the Spirit. These are not my definitions. I didn't think these up. I have been taught them over the years as I studied about these nine gifts of the Spirit through books, through old-timey cassette tapes, mm -hmm. CDs today, and through hearing sermons on the subject of the gifts. So these are just definitions that I have learned over the years and been taught by men and women of God. 
For example, I've, I've listened to, to cassette tapes by Kenneth Hagin, a great man of God who operated in the gifts of the Spirit for almost 70 years in his ministry before he went home to be with the Lord. And Hagen, well, I heard him, I was listening to a teaching on YouTube the other day. Hagen said, I don't know everything about these gifts. I'm not an authority on the gifts of the Spirit. I still have to study. I still have to learn in order to teach about these gifts. Now, if a man had been in the ministry almost 70 years mm. and he operated and moved mm. and God used him in these gifts, if he said, hey, I don't understand uh, all I need to know about them, I still need teaching, then you, you can rest assured you and I need teaching, Amen. don't we? Amen. And Hagen refers to a minister that he knew personally that in his in years before, he had sat under this man. This man spoke 32 different languages fluently. And the Greek language was his main language. And so he wrote research books, study books, helps on the Greek language. I would say this man is an authority on the Greek language, wouldn't you? So I use books like that to help me understand now, I have been familiar with the gifts and for 36 years. I've been studying about the gifts, the different gifts mentioned in the New Testament. I've studied about the gifts of the Spirit. I've taught all, on them over the years. And I am still learning. I still don't know everything I need to know. So, I still need to read reference works in simple enough language that I can understand the definitions and the meanings. So that's what we're going to cover. Now, the simple definition of the gift of word of knowledge is supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts in the mind of God. And your simple one-line definition, the word of knowledge reveals facts concerning things present, are things past. That's right. Things that are happening are things that are happening now. For example, if I came up to you and said, the Lord shows me that you have a hernia. And he says, that's right, I do. That is present. That's that is right. a fact. That is a word of knowledge. Because I didn't know that. I would have no way of knowing that. Now, if he had a growth on the outside mm -hmm. on his face... That would be common knowledge. You wouldn't need a word of knowledge. I wouldn't have to walk up and say, Brother, the Lord shows me that you have a growth on your face. No, we can see that. But that would have to be a word of knowledge to know that he has a hernia or anything internal. You can't see it. So the, the gift of the word of knowledge reveals facts concerning things past or present. The word of wisdom. It's supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose in the mind and will of God. Simple definition, the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the future. Now what's the difference in these two gifts? The difference between the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom is that the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives you through a word of knowledge is always concerning things present or things past. But the revelation from the word of wisdom, the, word, the revelation that the word of wisdom brings is always concerning things that are future. That's right, haven't sister. yet, they are still to come. For example... In, in Acts chapter 9, you can jot this down and read it later. We don't have time to turn to it. Ananias, he was just a simple disciple. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't in the pulpit ministry gifts of teacher, evangelist, apostle. He was a simple disciple. And the Lord spoke to him and gave him instruction. You remember Saul had been struck down on the road to Damascus, was, was blinded. And so the, the word of the Lord came to this disciple, ordinary man, who was praying. And he said, I want you to go to a street called Straight. 
and I want you to inquire in a house by a man that's going to live in this house on this certain street, this certain house, and there's a man inside, his name is Saul, and he's praying, and I want you to lay hands on him. That is a word of knowledge, because there was mm -hmm. a street in that, in that city named Straight. Yeah. There was a house, and he gave him the name of the person who owned the house, and Saul was inside that house praying. But then the Holy Spirit gave him a word of wisdom. He said, I want you to go lay hands on him, lay hands on Saul, that he may receive his sight. Mm -hmm. He is a chosen vessel unto me. He'll bear my name before Gentiles and kings, and he will suffer great things for my sake. That's a word of wisdom concerning the future. Right. What was going to happen to Paul? And didn't it come to pass? Wasn't Paul chosen? Didn't he receive his sight when this disciple named Ananias yep. went in and laid hands on him? Yes. It hadn't happened yet. That a word of wisdom said, you go lay hands on him. To receive his sight, he's called, he's a chosen vessel unto me. He'll be brought before kings, he'll preach to the Gentiles. Oh, but he's going to have to go through a lot of persecution for my sake. That's the word of wisdom concerning the future. And didn't Paul go through That's a right. lot yes. of persecution? Yes. But God gave Ananias that word of wisdom to get Paul prepared. That's what the gifts are for. Yes. Now, look at discerning of spirits. We're going to go back. We're going to cover each one of these nine gifts individually and give scriptural examples so that you can see them in operation and understand them. But for now, we're just simply tonight in the introduction going through and defining each of the nine gifts. Discerning of spirits gives insight into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. It's seeing into the realm of the spirit, the spirit world. Now let me say right off, it is not seeing a demon in an evil spirit behind every bush. Some people get way out of balance mm -hmm. in, this, in this gift. I call them granola Christians, nuts and flakes. <laughs> you guys stay balanced, balanced. Yes. There are three kinds of spirits. Did you realize that? There's the divine spirits, angelic spirits, spirit of God. There are satanic spirits, evil spirits, and then there's our own human spirit. That's right. So that's where the gift of discerning of spirits comes in to show you which gift. Which spirit is in operation? Now, look at the fourth one, the gift of faith. Oh, I love this one. It's a supernatural endowment by the spirit whereby that which is uttered or desired by man or spoken by God shall eventually come to pass. The gift of faith is a supernatural manifestation of special faith where that which is desired or spoken comes to mm. pass. The gift of working of miracles is to display God's power, His magnificence. Yes. His magnificence. A miracle is a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. It's a temporary suspension in the accustomed order, an interruption, if you will, in the system, the ordinary system of nature as we know it, operated by the force of the Holy Spirit intervening. So, working of miracles displays God's power through a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature. Now, what's the difference between the gift of faith and the gift of working of miracles? The gift of faith receives a miracle. The gift of working of miracles works a miracle. An example of the gift of faith is when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. The scripture says, Daniel believed God. God gave Daniel the gift of faith, which is special 
faith. It's a special manifestation of faith in order to, re to receive deliverance. Daniel didn't do anything. He simply believed God, trusted God, laid down and went to sleep in the lion's den. He received a miracle. The three Hebrew children thrown into the, into the fiery furnace. They said, our God is able to deliver us. They operated in the gift of faith. They trusted God. And when the men that were thro going to throw them in the furnace, when they opened the door, they were killed. It was so hot, the fire was. But when they were thrown in, walked out of there, down even the smell of smoke, they received a miracle. But now an example of working of miracles is when Moses stretched forth his rod and the Red Sea divided. That's an intervention in the ordinary course of nature. Rivers don't just part on their own, do they? Mm -hmm. A supernatural intervention in a course of nature. Moses pointing his rod at the dust and it mm -hmm. becoming lice and covering the mm -hmm. land of Egypt with lice. Moses stretching forth his rod and the Nile River turned to blood. Mm -hmm. Water being turned into wine. Yeah. That doesn't happen no. on its own. What is that? Working of miracles. Mm -hmm. That's the gift of working of miracles in operation. So the gift of faith receives a miracle. The gift of working of miracles works or performs a miracle. Now, gifts of healing. In the Greek, the term gifts of healings is plural. Both gifts and healings are plural. And this gift is the supernatural healing of disease without natural means of any source. The purpose of the gifts of healings is to deliver the sick, to destroy the works of the devil, the enemy, in the human body. Gifts of healings are manifested through someone else to you by either laying on of hands, anointing with oil, or just by speaking the word. Like Hagen, I've seen him do rise and be healed, and people get up out of wheelchairs. The gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known tongue, a tongue that you can understand. The gift of prophecy has no revelation with it, but it's simply speaking in a church service to men, to women in that service for edification, exhortation, and comfort. It is not a prediction about some future event that is yet to happen in the future. That would be a word of wisdom coming forth through that gift of prophecy. But a simple gift of prophecy, no revelation with it. It's simply words of edification. Thus saith the Lord, I love you with, a, with an everlasting love. What is that? That exhorts you. It encourages you. That is the gift of prophecy. You heard it in your own language. You understood those words. Now, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues or different kinds of tongues is a supernatural utterance in an unknown tongue. When you see this gift, the gift of diverse kinds or different kinds of tongues in operation, it is a supernatural utterance given by the Holy Spirit in languages that have never been learned by That's the right. speaker, the right. one speaking. That's right. And they're not understood by the mind of the speaker. Remember, if you read the book of Acts, chapter 2, when on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But God gave the other people that were hearing them the supernatural ability to understand what was was being spoken in those divers or different kinds of tongues. So the gift of different kinds of tongues is when someone stands up in, in a church service and begins to give an utterance, begins to speak in a 
tongue, a different tongue than our English, that we don't understand what those words are. That is the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. Now, interpretation of tongues, the ninth gift. It is a supernatural showing forth of what has been said in tongues. Mm -hmm. It's by the Spirit, the meaning of that utterance that was spoken in, a, in an unknown tongue, the meaning of that, those words, is shown forth. It's revealed so that everyone in that church service who heard that utterance in other tongues, now when the interpretation of tongues come forth, they can understand it in their own language mm -hmm. and be edified, be encouraged. How many times in, in church services has someone stood up and gave a message in tongues? They've been used to operate in the gift of the mm -hmm. spirit of diverse kinds of tongues. You don't know what they said, but then some, maybe somebody else in the back of the church or on the opposite side of the church that get up and say, Thus saith the Lord. That's right. And begin mm -hmm. to give you the interpretation, give you the, the what the meaning of the words that that person that gave the utterance in, through the gift of tongues said. So these are the nine gifts of the Spirit. Three of them say something, three of them Come do on, something, mm -hmm. and three of them reveal something. Yes. We're going to have fun with this <laughs> yes. Going through the Word of God, seeing the, each of these gifts in operation through men and women in the Word, learning the meaning, seeing how these gifts operate. I, Like I said, I'm just so excited I can't hardly really stand myself to, Come on, to, man. to impart, to share with you on this series on the gifts of the Spirit. And the pastor has, has given me permission at, at a later time to cover then the next group of gifts, say the motivational gifts in Romans 12 and the ministry gifts in Ephesians mm -hmm. 4. All of the gifts are different. All the groups, the three groups of gifts in the scriptures, they're different. They have different functions, different manifestations, different uses in the body of Christ. That's right. And so what, that's why we need teaching yes. on this. Amen. And, Amen. and Amen. aren't you glad that we have a yes. place to come, Restoration yeah. Church, mm -hmm. where the gifts of the Spirit yes. can be in yes. operation, yes. where God can use you, Woo, and come to on. anoint you by come the on, Holy sister. Spirit, to minister, to operate in each Hell. of these yes. nine gifts. And those of you who just want to sit at home and watch come on. and don't want to come, you go, you are going to miss out. <laughs> come on, yeah. sister, tell us. service after that camera is turned off. Ooh, the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. And we, aren't you glad we have a place that we yes. can come yes. and, and where the Holy Spirit yes. has the freedom yes. to move, to operate, yes. and to, to use each and every one of yes. us to use minister it. in each of these oh. nine gifts. Yes. Hallelujah. So give Pastor a hand of appreciation for providing yes. us with to manifest himself, yes. to Amen. flow and operate through us in the church services. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. I tell you what, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm really looking forward to <laughs> Pastor, you mm. sat in my seat, right? I'm really looking forward to uh, what's, what's coming forth and stuff yes. because as she stated, there's a lot of folks that, that just do not understand right. the importance of working in your gift and stuff. Some people go their whole lifetime and they never, ever get to understand what God has, has placed upon them. But real quick, I'm not going to piggyback on that teaching because that teaching was good by itself. Ooh, yes. uh, tell me when I get up there close enough to where everybody can see this real good on Facebook. Huh? Tell me when to stop. Uh, go over this way a little bit. Right here? Whoa, yeah. Right there? Yeah. Just going to let everybody know out there on Facebook, if you've not already, give me your name and your mailing address, but you want a prayer cloth, we're going to be laying hands on these tonight. Uh, you won't receive a letter from us asking you for mo uh, money now, nor will you ever uh, get anything in the mail from us asking for money. We have uh, purchased 500 of these prayer cloths to send out, 
And uh, we believe just in the Bible that the gifts of healing are still operating. We'll be glad to send you one, two, or three, or however many you request. But you will have to private message me your name and your number. And I'm going to apologize right quick because I told everybody a lie. I said I'd mail these out Monday. But Monday's a holiday, so they'll be going out Tuesday. So I won't be able to... Uh, to mail them out Monday morning, but they will be going out Tuesday, and they are actually a uh, really good prayer clause, and actually got a scripture on them from Isaiah, so uh, everybody here is in agreement with us, we pray that you are blessed, your family is blessed, yes. and with joy, peace, love, happiness, and go to church somewhere tomorrow, go to church somewhere tomorrow, I didn't tell you you got to come to Restoration Church, I said go to church somewhere tomorrow that preaches the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. Praise Amen. God. I tell you, a good thing to remember is go to a God-sensitive church. Not a seeker-sensitive, but a God-sensitive church. You get a God-sensitive church, and they are more than seeker-sensitive. They are Holy Ghost-sensitive. But until, uh, oh yeah, tomorrow, Sabre will be preaching, uh, bringing the word on the former and latter rain. So praise God, that's something. The former rain and the latter rain. Now, I'm not going get, to get into her sermon there, but the latter rain, which we're living in, is supposed to be much better yes. than the former rain. So tomorrow we'll be on at 10 a.m. Uh, with praise and worship, my beautiful wife, and then we're going to turn it over to Sabra and let her have it. The fourth Saturday of each month, Sabra's going to be teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And like she said, after that, we're going to go into other gifts. And then the second Saturday, we meet here all oh, for a time of just ministering to the Lord. Uh, we have some singing, but there's no preaching. There's no teaching. We just sit down. We got prayer shawls. We put them prayer shawls on, and we go and minister to the Lord. And you're welcome to come. Even if you belong to church, you're welcome to come. That's the we'll do it on Saturday night. God bless you. We love you. And remember, everything is going to be all right because Jesus is Lord. Amen.